Okay, today I'd like to do a quick review on this 300 Win Mag Remington 700 long range. Um, it's a rifle that I've, it's been through various levels of development and um, we've only had it for a short while but it's come on really well and we've done some videos that you would have seen out at the 2500 yards and, and even in as close as or as pushing the accuracy and trying to shoot a coke can at 2000 yards. The rifles come together really well, really happy with it and I just want to go through and show to uh, do a video of it to show it as it is uh, for the people asking questions and there's also a couple of points I want to go through as to at least my way of doing things to correct some of the stuff that I'm seeing out there out of, um, oh listen I'll get into that later in the video. Start with it's a basic um, Remington 700 long range, it's just in the standard form. They came in a Bell and Carlson stock, um, but otherwise it was a fairly standard looking rifle. Um, this isn't the stock it had, but that's how it came. Now I've gone through and set it up with the basics to start off with. Um, we have essentially the, the Night Force Attacker scope, um, and we had that standard stock We're running a, a normal sort of bipod, and that'll work very well. I found that I didn't like the the hand position how my hand sits on in here when I'm shooting this is very comfortable with a relaxed semi pistol grip of a long range rifle so I, ch I changed the stock for that reason it also gave me the ability to give me an adjustable rear cheek rest um, and I did some extra work I really like these this is actually a Seiko um, TRG42 bipod which you can see mounts up really close to the barrel, doesn't touch the barrel but really close up there so very low centre of gravity um, and I wanted to modify it so to, I wanted to get that into this stock so I actually modified all the fore, uh, fore end of this stock to actually put steel as the insert in there, this actually actually locates in there on a quick release but actually sat that in there and made that all work it shortened up the stock in doing that, I sort it off and and it did all that work inside there with fiberglass to make it all work so it actually shortened up the stock which also gives me uh, a fairly um, good um, fulcrum point or it's a little bit shorter it means that I get more raising my barrel out of the position where my um, pipe pot is and the back of the stock it's all standard except for we run a slightly softer um, butt pad um, and then I have the normal things I do which is this bit of steel down the bottom here which is there deliberately to give me a nice slide for sitting on the bag and I've also, I also like to hold the gun a little higher so I like good height in my bipod and I have my adjustable bag base that we use um, that this slides in. I might set the rifle up in there so you can see what that is um, uh, later on. Uh, the other things we've done, we have one of the white, um, that's just a 5 round magazine, we have a 10 round magazine, that clipped in all nicely with, uh, with the bottom metal um, and we also got rid of the X-Pro trigger and fitted one of the, um, this is actually a basics trigger and once I set it all up probably, that, probably that's all been working really well. Other than that's pretty straightforward, we have the, the, the bolt handle enlarger, the KRG or whatever they're called in the way the plastic one that bolts on it works fine for me we have the US optics um, anti-cant bubble so that's um, for those who don't know that, flip that out to the side and you've got your anti-cant sitting on the other side there that means it nice and easy to use and you've obviously got the ability to put it away fold it in so it's not sticking out for going in the bag or the case wherever you carry one of the things is that I did that want to do this. I haven't found a lot of good information out there and I'd like to share what I understand of this situation. Your scope versus your base in the way of getting full elevation, which means what I'm talking about. A scope like this, this is the Night Force Attacker. It has 120 minutes of elevation. A lot of people will tell you that if you put a 120 minute scope on a 20 minute base, you can end up with 140 minutes of elevation. That's simply not the case. That's not how it works and I get that it's how people used to do things but it's not how it actually works. The way it works is quite simple. Your scope adjusts up and down from its centre line. So from its centre line it has roughly half of its elevation. So a 120 minute scope has roughly 60 minutes of elevation from its centre line. If you bolt it on a flat base, so no MOA base, you're only going to get approximately 60 minutes of elevation, even though it's a 120 minute scope. 
If you do as a lot of people recommend and suggest and what's very easy to buy is you put it on a 20 minute base and then you put then you put this scope on top of it you'll get 20 minutes plus the stuff above the center line so you'll end up with 20 plus 60 that's 80 minutes of elevation if you want the full elevation out of a 120 minute scope you need to put it on a 60 minute base so this is what this is set up on this scope has just over 120 minutes and if you look closely this is a 40 minute base with a 20 minute uni ring set of this is the uni light um, mount from or set of rings from night force so there's another 20 minutes in this and then I get my full 120 minutes of elevation out of this scope so in a nutshell that's how it works I can only make this more complicated by trying to explain it more but a simple rule if you've got uh, even if it's if it's an 80 minute scope you want half of that you want a 40 minute base setup Anyway, I'll leave that one alone now. Um, the rest of it I think I've shown before, but I have my muzzle brake. This is my custom muzzle brake. Um, I've, I've done a bit of testing with it. The first setup like this, I had some minor cracks right through the back of this where it actually welded that plate on. I actually have re-welded that, put some deeper fillets in there and put some larger um, center welds in there to hold it better and then it's been functioning faultlessly. But it is something that's going through its testing. It operates brilliantly. We're just making sure it has longevity in the way it works properly. Properly. Um, but otherwise functioning very very well the ammo we've obviously set up to suit this thing very well um, and it, this thing is shooting really really accurately very happy with it another little point I would go through right now and I'll actually stop the video and I'll, I'll set this gun up on the shooting bag and show some other bits and pieces of what we do in the way of making a gun work well as a long-range gun okay so here's the rifle set up in the normal way that I shoot it. Okay, so it has my adjustable bag base on the rear. For those who don't know, this is a piece that um, we actually now sell. But this is a piece that gives me the ability to adjust with this knob the height of the rear of the bag. So I can set it all, set it all up and actually as I shoot, as this thing settles in, I can fine tune it very easily. Very much um, it's a nice way. Just doesn't really change much except it gives you a little more stability and a little more comfortable rather than fighting with a bag that's moving around. You have a nice control over it and it gives you that nice adjustability rather than squeezing your bag harder or messing around with your bag hard for much. It makes it nice and easy to use like that. It does, we have some foams in here to make it higher, but that is norm basically in the lowest that I normally shoot this rifle. And that's the bit I'd like to point out. There's my front bipod it's not a full extension but it's up there but you can see I have the gun very high off the ground you know, you'll also notice that not just because of my base setups on my scope but, or the rail and base but because I want the thing reasonably high up in the air that the scope is quite high now these are some features that are quite different to a hunting rifle um, what I found and and once again this is the way I do it I'm not saying it's right but it works really well for me and it makes sense to me which is how I like things to to understand things essentially one of the biggest deals about making a rifle or getting shoots and very high accuracy at long range is about comfort there's obviously lots of practice and there's lots of data and you've got to know lots about your firearm and, and all the bits and pieces but a big deal to actually making the shot work is yeah, becoming one with your firearm they say I just talk, I would just call it comfort so the things I like to have are essentially um, in the nature of this setup that I have here. The having the gun further off the ground lifts you up so you're not laying on your chest. You've got your chest up a little bit so you're not, you, your, your breathing isn't disrupting your shooting as much. You still have to have breathing pause and that sort of stuff and you're still going to have to learn how to correctly preload your bipod and all those bits and pieces. Getting your sight picture in places, understanding your squeeze, understanding your breathing, all, all those bits and pieces. But part of that comes from getting the right comfort out of the firearm. So as I said, I changed this stock just simply to get my hand position nicer. It was more comfortable where my thumb rests across the back of the stock and I'm more relaxed on the trigger. Now, another feature I found, and this may just be a me thing, but is that I get my stock up, my, my, my um, scope higher up, which I have to to some degrees to, for the amount I run in the way of angle on the scope. 
but essentially it, what it does is it lets your head sit up straight. You're not screwing over your head as much. When you've got your gun down low to the ground, as much as things may seem more stable, your breathing's more constricted, your head screwed over further. It's not as comfortable as actually coming up to there with your head straighter up, your chest off the ground. Not a lot, but you haven't got a lot of pressure on your chest. You're sitting more on your elbows, more on your shoulder frame. On the, if, you, if you've done some studies or done some work with it, you know that you're trying to end up with your triangle platform that you're using to sit at the front there. So these are, by lifting yourself up, that gives you a better control in my, in, in, from my experience. And the other side of things, that when I started doing this sort of stuff, I was trying to get my scope down as low as I could. That was super important. In truth, it's not very important at all for extreme long range. It really doesn't change much. You have your scope up, you know, you get yourself a ballistic calculator and do some maths with it. Move your scope around. Take it down to only one and a half inches off the bore and take it up to three inches off the bore. It really doesn't change your, your data very much. Different for hunting. If you're shooting 100 to 400 yards, you have a very flow, flat low round, then having your scope very low and having a smaller size scope so you can get it even lower means that your difference between one range and another range is not so much. So it matters and for some um, competitions that's a relevant thing, having it down. But if you really are dialing in your data and you're making your adjustments then your scope height should be more about comfort and about the ergonomics of the rifle. So the last thing I want to say about that, which is another thing I read quite regularly, is people have their scopes sized zeroed in at 300 yards and 500 yards and 800 yards. I don't know why they do that. I presume a certain amount of that is because they're trying to get more range out of it and they haven't got their, uh, enough elevation in their scope or they haven't got a big enough base on it. But I can tell you basically, in trying to shoot, and I've shot this rifle out to 2,500 yards, is that the difference between 100 yards and let's say 500 yards on something like this, a 300 wind mag, is only 8 minutes of angle. The difference between 1,000 yards, or let's go 1,000 onto that, so 1,100 yards and 1,500 yards is nearly 20 minutes of angle, or a bit over 20 minutes. So and then you, you get four times that when you go up again at, up another thousand yards or another 500 yards. It starts to elevate massively. What I'm saying is essentially the small gain you get out of zeroing at a longer range doesn't pay you back when you go to the extreme long range. So there may be other reasons for it. I'm not an expert. Um, I've experienced what I've experienced, but what I can tell you, what I've found, is that essentially if I zero at 100 yards, I find using other ammo far more flexible. I can pick up other ammo and I don't have to go to the range to get a speed on it. I can use that zero and then be able to adapt into that fairly quickly. So I can pick it up quite quickly by running a closer zero. Because essentially the difference between one round and another round at 100 yards is very minimal. The difference between one round and another round at 300 yards is getting a lot more and every time you step up another 100 yards that difference gets a lot further. So it's a, a, a shorter zero, a 100 yard zero is a lot easier to work with. Anyway, those are just my ways of looking at it. Um, they are, I'm not a professional, I'm not a trainer, I'm only someone who has been working at this for a few years in the in the long range stuff and building my own rifles, but it is something, certainly when we talk about bases on scopes, it's driving me nuts a little bit. People writing articles talking about a 140 minute scope with a 20 minute base gives them 160 minutes, it just simply isn't how it works, it just simply isn't how it works. So anyway, I hope that was worthwhile for someone. I hope I haven't picked too many fights with anybody. Um, this is this is a great rifle, working really, really well. We'll stretch her a little further still, I think, in the not too distant future. But um, I just thought you'd like to see how it is and how it's all working. All the best.